actually wanted to go to this game with my buddy, but that didn't end up happening. Bummer. So, back home, the friendly confines of Honda Center on this Halloween 2021. I hope all of you had a great Halloween holiday. I'm sure all you, some of you are out there having some parties in your costumes. So here's the so there was a game today for those who were caught up in the festivities of this holiday. Adam Henrique would get our scoring started on a one timer on the power play. Impressive. And look at that, a power play goal. Something I've been waiting for for a couple of games. Power play seemed to have kind of taken a day off when we were giving opponents you can't do that penalties. <laughs> Mike Hoffman would respond with a Canadian's power play of their own to tie the game at one. So the score, Henrique won, Hoffman won. Bruh. Then a little later on, the Canadians are going to get a, oh man. Cedric Paquette just nailed Trevor Zegers into the boards, and he is hurt. That's scary. That is correct. So they're going to give, with the severity of this hit, it's a five-minute major penalty. So uh, for those who don't know about that pe type of penalty, it's, it's the highest minute amount penalty that you can get in a game that actually results in a power play. Five for fighting, whatever, it's coincidentals and there would be nothing. But for a five-minute major penalty, you have to kill the entire thing off. But and if you give off, and if you give up a goal that on that type of power play, the power play does not end. So they could score as many, so the team could score as many goals as they want to. Just look at an Islanders Red Wings game a couple years ago. Late in the game, Tyler Bertuzzi took a high stick penalty that was a five-minute major, and the Islanders scored three times and won that game in overtime 7-6, but that's neither here nor there. So let's see what happened. And on that power play, oh, Vinny Letary. Who? He scores for the Ducks. Had no idea. Oh, Vinny Letary, a free, a free agent acquisition who had spent most of his time in the minors, filling in for Jacob Silverberg because he is out, placed in NHL's uh, protocol for the virus. The Terry gets the goal first as a duck, third of overall of his career. So Vinny Letary, nice job to you, my friend. First goal, assisted by Adam Henrique and Kevin Shattenkirk. Now Henrique has a goal and assist for two points in this game. Very nice. Late in the second period, however, it was pretty ugly. And oh my Evans, what are you guys doing? Jake Evans on the short on with the Ducks on a power play, he scores. A short-handed goal for the Canadians. That is possible to do. That, for those who don't know, and they were pretty good at it last year with the Canadians. Jake Evans gets one, and it's a 2-2 tie, assisted by Arturi Lekkinen and Jeff Petrie, a very underrated defenseman. And then in the third period, it's about halfway through, and the Ducks are in the defensive zone. Cam Fowler has the puck, and he passes it to the captain, who had tied his points record in Vegas. Oh, and here comes Troy Terry! Most impressive. A record-breaking goal for the Ducks. Troy Terry gets the goal on the Getzloff touch pass, and that, and with the touch on that puck, that will be career point number 989 in the illustrious career or the successful career of Ryan Getzloff, and that will put him all time in first place in Ducks history in points, passing the great Tamu Solani. So. 
Ryan Getzloff, a big congratulations to you. I tip my cap to you. Very well done. And you saw the team, uh, the entire team come off the bench. That's the kind of moment you will come off the bench for during a game and not after, at the end of a game to celebrate such a historic achievement like that. So congratulations to Getzloff on, on breaking the record or breaking the re yeah breaking the record for points all time in, in our franchise history passing Tame with Solani Terry with the goal Getzloff and Fowler with the assists and the Ducks would seal the game on a Sam Carrick empty netter. So the Ducks are going to play the New Jersey Devils in their next game, and the Devils have gotten better. They're four two and one, and they've got some new faces on their team this year. One of them is their big free agent acquisition, Dougie Hamilton. Two goals, four six, six points, seven games thus far, and a plus four rating this season. He's a very good puck handler, and if you guys love stats, he is an analytics darling. So keep your eye on Dougie Hamilton, number seven. Andreas Janssen, a former Toronto Maple Leaf, has four goals, two assists, six points, plus five rating in seven games. So a roughly a point per game player. He's a very good forward. And let's also watch wow. for Pavel Zaka, number 37, a center on the Devils. And he has four goals in his last five games, so he's pretty hot. I think he might score a goal for the Devils in our game versus them on Tuesday. And and I think we'll have they'll have Jonathan Bernier, the former Duck, start versus us on Tuesday. He's undefeated at 3-0. For the Ducks players to watch, let's keep an eye out for Troy Terry, who's got five points and four goals in his last four games, in, in his last five, five goals in his last six, and points in eight straight overall. Wow! And he's also our leading goal scorer. Five goals, five assists, ten points in nine games with a minus two rating. <laughs> oof. I say oof to the minus two rating. Ten points, nine games played. That's very impressive. Kevin Schattenkirk, point per game, three goals, seven assists. Plus six rate, plus six. I'm, I clearly am underestimating Shattenkirk this year. And let's also keep an eye out for the captain, Ryan Getzloff, who you saw in my previous clip, got the assist on the record-breaking goal by Troy Terry to surpass Tame Solani all-time in points in our history. So I expect the Ducks are going to lose that game because I think the Devils just are a little bit too little have a little bit more talent than we do, and they're going to take the game by a score of four to three regulation. The Coyotes are the other team that I will discuss, and they are winless. Oof, I remember when they couldn't get a win into November. Well, I mean, they have a chance to get their first win in November on two, on Friday, or, or on Friday if, when they play us. I wouldn't be surprised if the Ducks let them have their first win. And the players to watch for them will be... Shane Goss Despair, the former Flyer, analytic starling. He played another analytic starling like Dougie Hamilton because he has all those stats that people love. Only five points in nine games, all of them assists, no goals, a minus five rating. Yikes. And let's also look out for Clayton Keller, who's a very good forward, young forward, always is known to score goals against the Ducks. One goal in his last five games. But he's, but he's got the talent. Defenseman Anton Strollman has an assist and point in his last five games. Veteran defenseman, more of a stay-at-home type, so don't expect him to score goals, but he can make some plays. And the big physical defenseman, Ilya Labushkin, has a plus two rating in his last five. And I think they're going to start their number one goalie, his name is Karel Vejmelka because they lost a couple of their goalies to injury and they gave up their better goalie, Aiden Hill, to the San Jose Sharks. So my prediction with the next two games is going to be that we lose to the Devils. Are you sure about that? 4-3 regulation, but we beat the Coyotes and that will be a score of 3-1. to one. Hopefully I'm, I can be somewhat correct on that prediction. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for this spook of Quackcast as I try to put a little Halloween flair into it. I hope all of you had a great Halloween night. Maybe you're out there, all out there still partying it up with your buds. 
But aside from that, have a good night. Let's stay safe, everyone. Go Ducks, and let's build off this win that we had today. Go Ducks! Boo!